Hello and welcome. My name is Dennis Eggert. I am the Commissioner of Corporate Services for City of Medicine Hat. I want to take the next few minutes and share with you our financial challenge and picture uh, for the City of Medicine Hat. Uh, just to articulate what our challenge is, uh, what, how we plan on responding to our challenge, and what you can expect over the next short while uh, in terms of some of our action plans. First of all, you may have seen the recent announcement, which is titled the Accelerated Financially Fit Plan. Most of you, this is not new. Uh, we have heard about the Financially Fit Plan since 2016. Uh, this is a little different. It's a sharper focus uh, to look at how we are going to execute some of the action plans that we've identified. So this is our signal to the community uh, that we have a challenge uh, at the City of Madison Hat. And the significant challenge uh, relates to uh, our uh, municipal budget uh, coming up for 2021. Our recent announcement talked about a signal to the community uh, uh, of the significant challenge we have for the City of Madison Hat. And it's a $27 million annual budget gap. Uh, many of you were well aware of our original $23 million gap. Uh, we had partially solved that by one third uh, and now we have some recent headwinds that we're being faced with. The Alberta Fiscal Plan, which was announced by the Alberta government, both for the 2019 budget and the, the 2020 budget, impacts our grants and our contributions from uh, the government of Alberta. Uh, secondly, uh, commodity prices have taken a big uh, hit, uh, and there's some extreme volatility in commodity prices, not only on the oil side, uh, but especially on the gas side. And a lot of our oil and gas businesses in the shallow gas uh, area and fields, and we're, we're really feeling uh, the impact of, of, the, of the collapse of that uh, oil uh, and gas price especially. Uh, thirdly, uh, and probably very timely, is the COVID-19. Not only the immediate impacts of COVID-19 uh, that we see with our facility closures and relaunches, uh, but also the longer lasting impacts of COVID-19 on our operation and our residents, the ability for them to um, uh, pay uh, and uh, willingness of them to participate in some of the facilities programs. And of course, we rely on fees and charges in, in terms of our budget. So we're, we're definitely uh, well aware of that and we recognize that that is a risk for us going forward. Just to put it in perspective, uh, and I'm going to go back to the original $23 million dollars uh, if we did not uh, address the, the, the challenge ahead of us, our taxes would need to rise in the order of 25 to 30% of our current values. That is uh, just not sustainable and it's not acceptable uh, to the residents of the city. Uh, and so we need to find a different way to address that. I want to just talk about our financial reserves because many, I've heard many comments about why don't we just fund it through our financial reserves. Uh, we only have the uh, limited ability to fund it and we need to solve, uh, fundamentally solve the cost and, and revenue uh, problem for the city uh, and, and the looking at it f through a financial reserves is not a sustainable uh, plan for us going forward. So our challenge needs to be met head on uh, and that's what we've done. I want to talk a little bit about what our response is to the issue. Uh, our response is accelerated financially fit. And the Accelerated Financially Fit is a refocus on our foundational program from 2016 with the emphasis of the Accelerated. So we're looking at a refocus on the execution of initiatives. Uh, many of them will be executed uh, swiftly uh, and uh, in the near term. Uh, and th this is really to address uh, the situation that we're in. We are reimagining what the new normal could look like for the City of Medicine Hat. We're looking at strategic opportunities that focus on one, cost savings. Uh, and that cost savings could be uh, cost containment, service level adjustments, and also financial engineering on how we finance or pay for certain things. Exploring for new revenue sources. And this is not tax-based revenue. This is other forms of revenue uh, that we should be exploring and, and uh, looking at uh, for the city. And thirdly, looking at ways to grow our assessment base. And this is our assessment based for property taxes. This, these are new construction, new businesses coming to town, and the more assessment base we have, the further we can spread our taxes to a, to, to a broader base. The redefining cost structure of the city 
um, really points to the fact that we are responsible stewards of funds of, of the public purse. And these are funds of residences, and we take that very seriously. Tough decisions will need to be made uh, in the short term. Uh, we will have a revised assumption on our property tax revenue. Uh, our property tax revenue uh, originally was forecasted and budgeted to increase by 4% a year. And we're re-looking at that uh, and seeing what a budget could look like for a 0% tax increase. And that would be for 2021 and also going back into 2020. Further, we're expecting uh, potential uh, adjustments or reductions in assessment values due to COVID-19. And of course, our assessment is based uh, back in time to a date of July 1st, uh, 2020. And we were in the midst of COVID-19 in July uh, 2020. And so those, those assessment values that are going to be uh, determined and issued in spring of 2021 uh, will show an interesting picture. Uh, we're also looking at a, a program to reduce staffing levels throughout the organization. Of course, staffing is a large component of our expenses every year. Uh, it's approximately two thirds of our expenses uh, for the municipal operation. Uh, we're looking at ways to reduce staffing levels through attrition and early retirement. And there'll be more to come on this uh, uh, over the next uh, bit, uh, but expect a reduction uh, in that area. Uh, also, uh, we've recently uh, concluded uh, contract negotiations uh, with QP. Um, we're very pleased, and CUPE is very pleased as well, as we've achieved a 0%, 0%, and 2% uh, uh, agreement uh, with CUPE. And also for 2020, we've also uh, mandated a 0% uh, uh, increase for out-of-scope or non-union employees for uh, the city as well. I want to just talk about the uh, upcoming budget and when we can expect that to be approved by council. Uh, so we have uh, a very formal process. Uh, council will need to approve the budget uh, for 2021. Uh, they did approve it once already. It needs to be approved again due to renewed management assumptions, our renewed financial environment, uh, as well as uh, uh, the headwinds that we've been uh, experiencing here that we need to adjust the way we uh, spend money. Uh, council typically approves this prior to uh, entering into 2021. And so uh, you can expect a presentation to council for their consideration, a debate, uh, as well as any revisions as required uh, in December of uh, 2020. Uh, the, ro the, the role of, of uh, the budget presentation is actually quite uh, interesting just to articulate here. Administration will build the budget uh, including those initiatives that we require to meet our budget targets. Uh, council then will debate, uh, consider, amend, and approve that budget as it sees fit. And we expect all that to happen in uh, December of 2020. Uh, so in summary, um, we are very well aware of our challenge ahead of us uh, for the city. Uh, we're responding with a swift and courageous plan on addressing this uh, on behalf of our residents. Uh, we're all in this together, and we do appreciate your support as we work through this. Uh, it will be uncomfortable uh, for some people because some, some of the plans are quite bold, uh, but they're necessary for us to uh, maintain our sustainability, our financial health into the future. And uh, so I thank you for, for that, for your support, and uh, look forward to uh, providing you future updates in the future.